the industry of true crime is booming. Making money off murder. Like it or not, there's groups of people out here who idolize high profile killers and serial killers. Odds and ends from infamous killers selling online. A healthy chunk of Charles Manson's hair. Letters, artwork, and even a prison badge. Several of them tracking back to Colorado. Christopher Watts here, and you can see some of his letters here. Random items raising disturbing questions. From my perspective, you just shouldn't be able to rob, rape, and murder and then turn around and make a buck off of it. Andy Kahn's a crime victim advocate based in Houston. He's on a mission to dismantle what he's labeled the murderbilia industry. There is absolutely nothing more nauseating and disgusting when you find out the person who murdered one of your loved ones now has items being hawked by third parties for pure profit. Khan says oftentimes these inmates have no idea their belongings are up for sale on third party sites. And in some cases, Khan thinks convicted killers are profiting. How does this get out of the prison? U.S. mail. I'm fairly confident that uh, Colorado prison officials have no idea that this stuff is going on. This is America. And, you know, there's a, you know, an old saying, don't like it, don't buy it. William Harder makes his living selling items from high-profile killers. Page after page, cashing in on crime. He runs MurderAuction.com. The public interest is created by the media and the news. And then I capitalize on that by people wanting to go a step further. Harder considers himself both an entrepreneur and a collector. I don't feel I have any need to apologize. Apologize apologize for what? For, for collecting items that I want to have? What do you say to victims who don't agree with what you're doing? I would tell them not to come to my website. And when we start banning things, that's that's not the way to go. You know, where do we draw the line? Here's a picture of Alex and his sister, Megan. Uh, These are the memories Tom Sullivan wants to remember. My wife, Terry, really likes you know, that, that picture. His son, Alex, died celebrating his 27th birthday. And this was after Alex was murdered. He was one of the 12 victims of the Aurora theater shooting. I got people running out of the theater, they're shot. We need rescue inside the auditorium, multiple victims. This is a, a letter from James Holmes. Oh, jeez. We showed Sullivan how people are making money off his son's murder. Wow, I'm kind of mystified. Handwritten letters from the theater shooter are also among the items up for sale, described as quite rare and highly sought after. One site says it sold a letter for $650. It's like, really? Okay, so who's making the money and where's it going and is there a way to stop this? And the items connected to cold-blooded killers go beyond prison letters. Prison IDs are rare. You don't normally find prison IDs being sold. But our reporting discovered this Colorado prison ID selling for $350 and an autographed prison t-shirt from the same killer. Another unusual item are his handprints. Lead me to the inclination that he is acutely aware that his stuff is being sold and perhaps he is receiving some of the proceeds. This Colorado murderer is Christian Guzla. While you might not remember his name, you may remember his crime. A man was murdered overnight here in Denver and the details are truly disturbing. Guzlow slashed a homeless man to death with Freddy Krueger gloves in a Torchy's parking lot. It happened in 2017 in downtown Denver. The killer wore a demonic clown costume and was a death metal singer. He was well known around downtown Denver on his scooter wearing demon, vampire, and ghoul playing. His notoriety now fueling a demand for contraband from Colorado's own state prison. You had to get that out from point A to point B. How did that happen? The Department of Corrections responding to our reporting tonight, calling it appalling that anyone would attempt to profit off these types of items. DOC's Inspector General's office is now investigating, and we're told T-shirts and ID cards would not be authorized for an inmate to send out of a facility. I'm Denver 7 investigative reporter Jennifer Kovaleski. And if you are wondering how is this legal, well, we wonder too, and here's what we found. There are what's known as son of Sam laws, which are supposed to prevent killers from commercially profiting off their crimes. But those laws only stop murderers from writing shows or books, not selling personal items. And some states have also ruled these laws unconstitutional based on freedom of speech. Colorado is not one of them. Now, putting an end to murderabilia will likely take federal legislation. And two U.S. senators have tried to do so in the past, but the bill has failed to make it out of committee.